Ugh. Why don't you two just elope, for God's sake? Impertinent. Offensive. Actually, would you mind? Not at all. You've been reading John's blog, the story of how you met. Helps him if I see myself through his eyes sometimes. I'm so much cleverer. Beating corpses to establish how long after death bruising is still possible. Excellent reflexes. You'll do. I also play the violin and smoke a pipe. I presume that's not a problem. Uh, oh, well. You know, it's rare for us to sit together like this. Two old friends just talking, chewing the fan. Man to man. Oh, isn't he observant now that Daddy's gone? I am observant in some ways. Just as Holmes is quite blind in others. For the record, Holmes, she didn't have me fooled. Why do you need to be alone? Why are you so determined to be alone? You are referring to romantic entanglement, Watson, which I rather fear you are. As I have often explained before, all emotion is abhorrent to me. She married you. I assume she was capable of finding a reason. I'll do my best. Marriage is not a subject upon which I dwell. Why not? What's the matter with you this evening? That watch that you're wearing, there's a photograph inside it. I believe it is of Irene Adler. <laughs> a very nice photograph. Why are you talking like this? The fair sex is your department, Watson. Is it such a curious question? I'm currently attempting to have a perfectly normal conversation with you. Please. You're a living, breathing man. You've lived a life. You have a past. A what? I... I thought I was losing you. I thought perhaps we were neglecting each other. Well, you're the one who moved out. I was talking to Mary. What an excellent choice of life. Well, well you must have had... Had what? You know. No. Experiences. You are flesh and blood. You have feelings. You have... You must have... Impulses. No, he can do this. I've seen it. The mind palace is like a whole world in his head. Yes, and I need to get back there. Stop it. Did you make a list? Of what? Everything, Sherlock. Everything you've taken. Against absolutely no opposition whatsoever, I am your closest friend. For God's sake, this could kill you. You could die. As someone who worries about you, what made you like this? <sighs> Cocaine. A 7% solution. Do you care to try it? No. But I would quite like to find every ounce of the stuff in your possession and pour it out of the window. I'm an army doctor, which means I could break every bone in your body while naming them. My dear Watson, you are allowing emotion to cloud your judgment. Listen, I'm happy to play the fool for you. I will run along behind you like some half-wit making you look clever, if that's what you mean. But dear God above! You will hold yourself to a higher standard. Why? Because people need you to. What people? Why? Because of your idiot stories? Yes, because of my idiot stories. The end! It's always just you and me! <laughs> Thought that she found happiness with Riccoletti. But he was a brute too. <laughs> I do believe he finds your attention a shade annoying. Oh, spoken like an addict. This is important to me. No, this is you needing a fix. There's always two of us. Don't you read the strand? No, everyone always lets you do whatever you want. That's how you got in this state. Thank you, John. Since when do you call me John? You'd be surprised. No, I wouldn't. I'm not playing this time, Sherlock. Not anymore. So what's he like? The other me in the other place. When you're ready to go to work, give me a call. Smarter than he looks. Pretty damn smart, then. He's right, you know. So what if he's right? He's always right. It's boring. Pretty damn smart. I just went to the trouble of an overdose to prove it. In any case, I know I would be very much at home in such a world. Oh. Miss me? Sherlock, are you all right? Yes, of course I am. Why wouldn't I be? I think I would be. I beg to differ. But then I've always known I was a man out of his time. Dr. Watson. Look after him.